Hey, we're back with another episode of Before You Buy, that show where we give you some straight up gameplay and our first impressions of the latest games releasing. As usual, it's me, Jake Baldino, and today we're talking about Marvel Midnight Suns. Uh, this is the latest game from Firaxis, the people behind so many incredible games like the Civilization series, the modern XCOM games. They are PC strategy game kings, if you ask me. And what they've done here is make a multi-platform Marvel super hero game. Not something you totally expect from the nerds at Firaxis. I was actually a bit worried, but what's the deal? Well, a lot of people chalk this up as XCOM, but with Marvel heroes, and uh, believe it or not, it is not that. It's more of a strategy tactics RPG thing with almost Persona-like elements, where between battles, you're doing a bunch of random things, you're chatting with teammates with in-depth character and conversation mechanics, and a bunch of busy work. If it sounds weird, yeah, it is. Uh, it's gonna either work for you completely or kinda half fall flat. I'm enjoying it, actually more than I expected, but it's got some sticking points and it's a lot of game in here. So uh, let's just go. Now, the story setup is Lilith has returned to once again take over the world and she was revived by Hydra scientists and that's really only the beginning as things quickly become this massive adventure encompassing a shocking amount of places, scenarios, Marvel heroes, and some pretty in-depth elements from the comic universes. But you, uh, you the player, are someone known only as the Hunter, a centuries-old warrior occasionally revived to fight Lilith and other worldly forces. Uh, now, you are connected to them in personal ways, and uh, yeah. After sleeping in a coffin, you are brought back to life in the 21st century by Doctor Strange and Iron Man and caretaker of the Midnight Suns, and that's where you create your character with some pretty limited characters character creation options at first, but Hunter serves as uh, the kind of generic vessel through which the story is told. This is a completely new made up character. It's not like a comic book reference or anything. Uh, so your male or female Hunter is kind of like a sexy, fancy talking warrior man or warrior princess type that you can eventually make cool through in-game choices and costume unlocks, but a lot hinges on them. And I don't think it quite lands. They just kind of always look and come off goofy to me and the game tries to balance them uh, being a person from another time without it being too stereotypical, but it kind of comes off all over the place. That might just be me, but uh, you know, the other angle of the story is the big emphasis on the magic arcane side of the Marvel comic universes. You meet up with Tony Stark and Doctor Stephen Strange because they want to save the world, but uh, they, along with Captain Marvel and a few others, are collaborating with the Midnight Suns in this game universe, uh, an older order dedicated to protecting the world from this spooky stuff, and the main crew is Blade, Yes, Blade, Magic from the X-Men, Nico Minoru from the Runaways, and the freaking Robbie Reyes version of Ghost Rider, you know, the one with the car. So if you can't already tell from how I'm like pretty excitedly breaking this stuff down, I'm a bit biased. I love this stuff, I always have, so I'm gonna be a bit soft on some of it because I love seeing other Marvel characters being represented and uh, also just having the main guys shown in a different light. Like I said though, there are a lot of angles to Marvel and a lot of it pursued here though, and a lot of it hinges on Caretaker, Lilith, Agatha Harkness, Doctor Strange, and the magical stuff that isn't as flashy or as exciting. I don't know if the game does it justice here. It's hard to bring that stuff from comics to here, but it walks a line between that stuff and awesome, good old fashioned, cool superhero stuff. Seeing one of your favorite characters show up, having a big battle with a legendary villain, and even seeing these cool new Lilith evil corrupted versions of some characters, it's actually pretty damn awesome. Some of the filler stuff in between, I don't know, not so much, but uh, we'll get to that. Now the strategy combat is a lot of fun. It's not hyper complicated actually. It's got just the right amount of statistics and buffs to get you thinking, but not completely bury you. It feels lighter and a, a bit more casual than other Firaxis games, which at first kind of weirded me out, but I got used to it and quickly started enjoying these battles. It's turn-based, uh, yours and the enemies, and you can use cards that act as moves within your turn. You have a limited amount of card plays for your turn, and you need to balance spending card plays, but also using cards that use up your heroism points. So. You also typically start with one character move per turn, but the characters often tend to move around a lot for a variety of reasons. So yeah, it's a card-based system, but it doesn't totally 
feel like a full-on card battler. The cards obviously dictate what moves you can pull off and are based on drawing them from a deck you set up, yes, but the decks aren't massive, everything is manageable, and there's a bit more to it than the cards. A lot of the combat is based on positioning and using the environment to your advantage. Lots of moves encourage knocking enemies in a certain direction to slam them into other things for damage bonuses, like kick a guy into an electrical panel or pick up a garbage can and throw it at a dude's head. You know, super heroic stuff. But it leads to a lot less staring at numbers and stats and more just kind of sitting and thinking about the matches as puzzles like you know when there are sub objectives especially other than just like killing all the enemies sometimes it's about thinking about how to optimize every single thing going on and every move to do something in a short amount of time or really sometimes accomplish everything in just one turn keep in mind though these battles aren't always short they're not just pick up and play type things but either way like it can be really freaking satisfying man i really enjoy the battle system here it's not perfect you know a majority of the levels are pretty Pretty small though, uh, you know, either small or just limited, and that was a bit of a bummer. I get it's smaller battles, like with, you know, you only have three hero characters playable during a match, but still, you know, a little bit more depth, like layout wise or situational wise, would have been awesome and it would have made it even better, but it's already pretty damn good. Now, there are a bunch of different difficulty modes, too. I know a lot of folks like to really feel the pain with XCOM games and Firaxis games, and it seems like they're still willing to give it to you. There's a string of different difficulty modes, and you can unlock them, and they typically modify percentages, like, say, giving enemies 25% more health, but you get more XP and currency bonuses, you know, stuff you'd expect. As more characters are introduced, pretty consistently, battles can get a little more complex. Like if you wanna mess around with portals, magic buffs and debuffs and traps, and it's all there, but it's all relatively manageable. The game is good at like at a glance info, so you know what the hell is going on, even if you're not like a strategy game expert. Characters have big screen filling cutscene attacks that are absolutely incredible. Spider-Man's spider sense kicks in and it's iconic looking. Wolverine is obnoxiously mean as he should be, at least in battle. Ghost Rider's big move is incredible, and team attacks look pretty stunning, say like having Captain Marvel do some insanely big explosive blast like a Super Saiyan while Blade jumps in from the background, like it's wild stuff. The presentation aspect in combat is really damn good. It's still a like this type of game though, so characters will sometimes stand awkwardly between or in the middle of turns or sometimes something dopey will happen, but it's still really in the moves and the actual attack and moves and animations. They always look stunning and it makes combat more satisfying, even when you're just clicking a button and uh, you couple that with some really good cinematic music, probably at least in the top five of what I've heard this year and it's pretty cool. The other half of the game is focused on the Abbey. Now this is like home base. This is the old spooky haunted church castle that the Midnight Sun shack up in, along with some of the Avengers for this mission. And this is where things are a bit more mixed for me personally. Right. This is where you improve your characters, you power up your deck of cards, and then uh, a bunch of other bullshit busy work. Now, I'm sorry if that sounds harsh, but the game heavily focuses on giving you a lot of optional stuff here that I just found to be kind of tedious. Collect this, look for this, lore pages here. Not a lot of it really resonated with me, but uh, thankfully, like I said, a lot of it is optional. The game starts slow and puts a lot of work into setting up complex reasons and processes for everything, like unlocking and opening new card packs to unlock new abilities has to be this thing where you collect from levels and bring back to Tony Stark for him to decrypt with the same cutscene every time, and the same goes for Doctor Strange with his research branch trees. Like, the stuff I wanna get from this is useful. I want to unlock this stuff, of course, but some of it just feels needlessly complicated, almost like chores. There are some games where after battles, I love coming back to the base and cashing stuff in, but here, as much as the stuff is useful, it just like wasn't as satisfying to bring home the goods, you know? Then there's all the team stuff. There's friendship meters to increase for bonuses and lots of story stuff. The game's kind of focused on like a day and night cycle. So like you have a day, you do a battle, you come back and then you go to sleep and start it all over. So every day you can 
spar with a team member, and then of course you can walk around essentially this superhero Hogwarts and just talk to everyone, you know, do favors for them, little loyalty things, and uh, essentially go on friend dates, like go fishing with Blade or read a book at the fireplace next to Tony Stark. It's really silly, you know? It, the marketing suggested some cool, darker stuff here, but the game is surprisingly lighthearted. I'm pretty forgiving because I love comic book wackiness and I've seen every single weird angle of these characters. You know, I'm actually okay with having a beer with Doctor Strange or whatever, but something about the tone here does still feel a little off. For me, it's a couple of things. It's the Midnight Suns group themselves. You know, it's just a bit too teenagery drama stuff. There's an interesting story arc in there with, with uh, the Suns themselves being pissed off living in the Avengers shadow and all this other baggage, but it's gotta be grating for some people. Some of the writing, uh, some of the voice acting can be a bit cringe inducing, especially with uh, Tony Stark and his weird looking face. But for every moment where I'm grumbling through a lot of that stuff or groaning through it, there's some great moments here and there. It's like having a long in-depth conversation talking to an awkward Peter Parker or a cool deep cut comic reference that I appreciated somewhere. Some of it did work with me. It's like some of it is fan fiction-y and some of it is satisfying. The Abby stuff for me is kind of the weak point. It's 50-50. It's certainly not all bad. Uh, you know, there, there's some of it that feels like a chore. Uh, there was some of it that I was dying to rush through to get to the next battle or the next big story moment or character reveal. Uh, some of stuff is totally optional, but there is a lot of it. They went all in on the social simulation persona stuff. Uh, then there's even the battle preparation stuff, leveling up and customizing. That's actually pretty decent, and it, it's in-depth if a bit overcomplicated. And even in dialogue, there's a kind of a light morality system that is nuanced, depending on like who you're talking to. It's not just choosing good guy saying or bad guy saying. And those choices will actually net you bonuses and certain types of attacks for your hunt if you want to be more of a light side hunter or a dark attack hunter, you know? <laughs> and even if there are some cringe inducing conversations here and there, uh, the overall story seems interesting. I'm just torn on the whole thing though. Some people might not be into staring at static kind of wooden characters talking for hours on end about not really much, but plenty of players don't mind that type of stuff. I basically played it like there were certain characters I wanted to hear from and some I found annoying. I wanted to talk to Peter Parker a lot, obviously, I'm biased, but yeah. Some players like this stuff. I think ultimately, if it's not perfect, uh, Firaxis's heart was in the right place. They went for it. They cared about the source material, but clearly did, definitely wanted to do their own things with it. Like they really did some of their own things with it. You're gonna see some characters say and do some shit you never expected. And it might rub some people the wrong way, uh, but others could shrug it off. If you can't tell, I keep saying it, I'm very torn here. But you know what? Uh, a decent, fun, Firaxis strategy battler with some weird comic book cool shit in it. I don't know, like that sounds good on paper and it's still pretty good here. This is a lengthy game that you can dump hours and hours into, even if some of the characters just sound like overly quippy weirdos. Uh, when you're out there fighting, you're deck building, and following the main story, it's really fun stuff. So I think this is a game for very specific types of players. Players who have uh, read some comic books and have tolerances for different and weird versions of classic characters. Uh, players who love deep character social sims and people who love Firaxis games. I think if you're at least two out of those three things, then you're in good shape to at least consider this game. It's pretty bold, it's pretty different, it's not what I expected. And although I definitely pointed out a lot of things I'm not super into, ultimately I still had fun. I leaned towards that side. But of course, this is a before you buy. You know how this goes by now. I give you some pros, some cons, and some personal opinion. And now I wanna hear yours down in the comments. Uh, of the characters revealed, who are you looking forward to playing as the most? Do you have any experience with some of the deeper cut Marvel stuff here, at least set up. Let's talk about anything Marvel and Marvel Midnight Suns and Firaxis down in the comments. Would love to hear from you guys. Uh, I gotta say though, if this helped you out, maybe steered your purchasing decision, just gave you some general information, clicking the like button's all you gotta do. We would very much appreciate that. But either way, thank you guys very much for watching. We'll see you next time. Now's your chance to hone those skills of yours. Don't leave any Hydra standing.